So greetings to every one of you listening and I have joined me for this presentation. Today I have an interesting topic to bring forth to you and it's titled Our God Promised to Return. Yes, our God promised to return. So as we go through this lesson, we are going to find out why our God will return, why did he live in the first place, uh, what will happen to his people, his chosen nation, why he's gone back to heaven. So I'm, I'm hoping that through this lesson you will be richly blessed and your hope will continue to be made firm. So, if you are ready, let's roll. Uh, we are going to look into the scriptures to find out what has happened, what our God is doing, what he has done, and what he will do. So, notice what our God said about himself in the book of Isaiah chapter 46 verse 8 to 10 and there it is written remember this and take courage take it to heart you transgressors remember that the former things of long ago that I am God and there is no other I am God and there is no one like me from beginning I foretell the outcome and from long ago the things that have not yet been done. I say my decision will stand and I will do whatever I please. So our God said we should keep this in mind because we are not dealing with a man. We are dealing with a God. He so said, he called us transgressors. Yes, the people of Israel, we are transgressors. For we transgressed against the covenant, against the laws that our God gave to us. So he said, we should remember this and take courage and take it to heart. We should remember the former things of long ago, that he is God. Before there came to be false gods among us, he is the only living God. Yes, he is the only God. And there is no other. He's, he also said that from beginning, he foretells the outcome of these events that are happening today. So if you know your God, you know that your God, Yahuwah, is a God that tells the future from the beginning. The things that he has foretold long ago, they are the things that are taking place and will take place even to, in the future. He said, my decision will stand and I will do whatever I please. So whatever those decisions that he has made, those things that he has said he will carry out, those are the things that will be carried out, will be carried out, that will be carried out. So that we can know or should know that he is God and there is no other. Okay? So, see now that I am God, that I, I am God. That is one thing our God wants us to know. By the things that he's doing, by the things that he has foretold from long ago, so that we should know that he is God and there is no other. He is the only one telling the future from the beginning and he is the only one carrying out the things that he has foretold of long ago. For example, in the book of Genesis chapter 15 verse 13 to 16, there, a God foretold to Abraham of what will happen to Abraham's descendants, his chosen ones, 
there he reads, Then he said to Abram, Know for certain that your offspring or your descendants will be foreigners in a land not theirs, and that the people there will enslave them and afflict them for four hundred years. But I will judge the nation that they will serve, and after that they will go out with many goods. So, Yahuwah is a God of prophecy. He foretells things before even they happen. He can tell the future in advance. So he told Abraham, no, for sure this thing will happen to your chosen descendant. They will be taken to a land that is not theirs, and there they will be afflicted and then slave for 400 years. But after he will judge the nation that they will serve, and after they will come out with many goods. So as we go through these lessons, keep in mind our goal is to, is to show that our God will return back to earth. The question is, why did God leave the earth? Why did God leave the earth? Well, in the book of Hosea, chapter 5, verse 15, there it is written, I will go away and return to my place until they bear, punish, bear the consequences for their guilt. And then they will seek me, they will seek my favor. When they are in distress, they will seek me. So Yahuwah said that he's going to leave Israel, his chosen people and nation alone. And he's going to go away and return to his place in heaven. And until Israel bears the consequences of their error, he said, and then they will seek for his favor. And they, when they are in distress, they will seek me. So God telling the future what is going to happen to the descendants of Abraham. The chosen descendants of Abraham, Israel. So he will go away and then return to his place. Israel will bear the consequences or the punishment for their guilt, for their error. After the punishment, then they will do what? Seek his favor. When they are in distress, they will seek for him. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 21, there it is written, <clears throat> When many calamities and distresses come upon you, this song will serve as a witness to them, for their descendants should not forget, forget it. For I already know the inclination that they have developed even before I bring them into the land about which I have sworn. So even before Israel became a nation, even before Israel took over the promised land, God again telling the future from the beginning told Moses that he already know the inclination of the people that he's, he called, he chose to be his people. He said, already know what is going to befall them in the land where they are going to inherit. So, but he told Moses that when many the calamities and distresses come upon them, the song that he has told them, the things Moses has wrote, should serve as a witness to them. That we can then read these things and recall them to our mind of what our God said will happen. To us in the final days when all these calamities has come upon us. So our God has foretold the future from beginning. So he said he's going to return, go away and return to his place in heaven until Israel bear the consequences of our guilt. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 32 
verse 26, 20, verse 20 to 26, there it is written. <coughs> so he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what will become of them. For they are a perverse generation, sons in whom there is no faithfulness. They have incited me to fury with what is not a God. They have offended me with their worthless idols. So I will incite them to jealousy with what is not a people. I will offend them with a foolish nation. I will incite them for my for my uh, 2022 20, for my anger has kindled a fire that will burn to the depth of the grave and it will con consume the earth and its produce and will be set ablaze the fund foundations of mount of mountains and I will increase their calamities I will use up my arrows on them they will be exhausted from hunger and eaten up by burning fever and bitter destruction. I will send the teeth of beasts against them and the venom of, rep venom, venom of reptiles of the dust. Outside the sword will breathe them. Inside there will be, there will be, there is terror for both young men and virgin infant together with gray-haired men i will have said i will scatter them i will make the memory of them to cease from among men so why did god leave the earth because of the error of the people of israel Yes, because of the sins of the people of Israel, they left the living God, the true God that have chosen them, to go and serve idols. That is what our ancestors did. So they, they have caused the Most High to become very angry that he abandoned his people and returned back to, earth, to heaven that he will abandon his people and return back to heaven. He said he's going to provoke his people to jealousy with their people, with what is not a, a nation. So, but he's going to bring calamity on the nation of Israel, his people. Say, so outside the soul we breathe them, inside there will be terror for both young men and virgins, infants together with gray-headed -head men. So he would have said, I will scatter them and make the memory of them to cease from among men. God said he would have, he would have scattered Israel, leave us there to die of there. And nobody cares who care about us. But if not for what the nations will be saying. So our God left the earth and returned back to heaven because the people of Israel provoked him to anger with what is not a God. They left the Most High God, Yahuwah, to go and worship and serve false gods. And even till today, our people are serving the gods of the nations. Our people are seeking and serving things that are not God. Yes, that is why God left the earth. That is why God left the earth. Because the people that he chose to represent him and to serve him, left the living God to go and serve false gods of the nations. Let's keep moving on. 
The next question is, if he left Israel to bear punishment for our error, when will our God return back to earth? When will he return back to earth? Well, the book of Hosea 5, 5 says, 5, I mean 5, verse 15 says, until, <coughs> until they bear the consequences for their guilt, and then they will seek my favor or for my mercy. So until Israel bears the consequences for their guilt or the punishment for their guilt, for the guilt of our ancestors, until we bear that, com complete that sentence, our God will not return back to earth. In the book of Hosea ch chapter, how long, how long will Israel bear this punishment for their error before our God will return? Well, in the book of Hosea, chapter 6, verse 1 and, 1 and 2, there is written, Hosea is prophesying a time in the future. He said, Come and let us return to Yahuwah, for he has torn us to pieces, but he will heal us. He struck us, but he will bind our wounds. He will revive us after two days. On the third day he will raise us up, and we will live before him. So Yahuwah, the God of Israel, promised that he will leave his people Israel alone and return back to heaven until Israel completes bearing the 2,000 years punishment imposed for their ancestors' errors. He said he will abandon Israel to bear this punishment. So when did he abandon Israel to bear this punishment? In the book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 37 to 39, Israel was abandoned when the Messiah declared the judgment of the Father when he came to inspect the nation of Israel. And this is what the Messiah said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the killer of prophets and stoners of those sent to her. Say how often I wanted to gather your children together, the way a hand gathers her cheeks under her wings. Say, but you did not want that. He said, look, your house is abandoned to you, for I said to you, you will by no means see me from now until you say, blessed is the one who comes in the name of Yahuwah. So the Messiah said, the house of Israel is abandoned to Israel, because God has been trying to gather her children together. Remember, at one point, Judah, kingdom of kingdom of Judah and the kingdom of Noah broke away, broke away, separated, and they became different nations. They scattered among the nations, but he said they have been. The, he has been trying to gather the children of Israel together, but they don't want that. So he said, the house is now abandoned. That means the punishment that God imposed we now follow the people of Israel until they have completed the punishment due for their error. And Hosea told us that God said he would punish Israel or struck Israel for two days. But two days is really 2,000 years before Israel can return and seek for him, for his mercy. So when they are in distress, then they will seek me. So Israel has been in punishment, in distress, for almost 2,000 years now. That punishment has been going on. 
So let's move further. So until Israel finish their punishment before our God will return back to earth. Um, notice what will happen to the people of Israel while Israel is bearing this punishment. Two thousand years without our God. So God said he will leave Israel alone and go and return to his place in heaven until Israel completes this sentence upon them. And that sentence we found out in Hosea chapter 6 verse 1 and 2 that is going to be for two days. Okay? It will be for two days before God can do what? Can bind our wound. Before God can heal us back and restore us as his people. So, in the book of Second Peter chapter 3 verse 8, Peter reminded us about this punishment. Yes, they were initially in the book of Acts, they were thinking that the kingdom will come right away. But Peter reminded us, it's written, however, do not let this escape your notice, beloved ones, that one day is with Yahuwah as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. So for 2,000 years, or for two days, or close to 2,000 years, God's people will be what? In punishment, bearing the consequences of the guilt and the errors of our ancestors. That has to be completed before our God will return back to earth. So in the book of Isaiah chapter 66 verse 4, it is written, So I will choose ways to punish them, and the very things they dread I will bring upon them. Because they have called, and because when I called, no one answered. When I spoke, there were, no, there were none who listened. They kept doing what was bad in my eyes, and they chose to do what displeased me. So God said, when he was calling our ancestors to turn away from their bad ways, to turn away from their ways, to seek Yahuwah and do what he has commanded. He said, no one listened. No one listened. He said, therefore he will choose ways to punish them, to punish the people of Israel, because of our guilt, because of our error. He said, the things that we dreaded, he will bring upon us as a punishment because of our not listening to the things that he commanded, because of breaking away from the covenant that he made with us. So for 2,000 years Israel will be without our God. He will abandon us and return to his place in heaven, and Israel will be in jail bearing punishment for our guilt. So he said he's going to do what? Um, provoke Israel to jealousy with what is not a nation. He's going to use the nations, other nations, to inflict punishment upon the people of Israel because of our error. In the book of Hosea, chapter 3, verse 4 and 5, it was prophesied by the prophet. Our God said, It is because for a long time the people of Israel will dwell without a king, without a prince, without a sacrifice, without a pillar, without an effort, without a terrifying statues. Afterward, the people of Israel will come, come back and look for 
Jehovah their God, and for David their king, and they will come trembling to Jehovah and to his goodness in the final part of the days. Yes, it was foretold that God will go away and the people of Israel will do what? For a long time, which we have figured out now is for 2,000 years. Two days plus 2,000 years. A long time the people of Israel will dwell without a king. They will have Israel will have no king to lead us or gather us together. In fact, the last king that we have is the king of the Jews, Yahushua the Messiah. He was the last king for Israel, but he was rejected. He was withdrawn back to heaven because of the error of the sins of Israel. Our king was withdrawn and went back to heaven. So for 2,000 years, the people of Israel will have no king to lead us, no prince to speak for us. Uh, we will have, which I will be without a sacrifice. There is no sacrifice for our error because we will be in punishment. We are in punishment for our error until it's complete. Without a pillar, a pillar is a home. So for 2,000 years, the people of Israel will have no homeland to return to because there will be in punishment among the nations. And for 2,000 years, the people of Israel will be without an effort an effort is what the high priests wear in order the, the cloth that they wear to uh, to discern the to discern uh, the will of Yahuwah. There won't be anything for us to discern the will of Yahuwah. There won't be any means for us to know the will of Yahuwah until we have served 2,000 years punishment because our God left Israel and returned back to heaven. Yes, for 2,000 years the people of Israel will have no what? They will be without a teraphim statues. They will have no God image of our own. Rather, we will be serving the image of the gods of other nations. We'll be serving the God image of given to us by other nations. That's why you have the statue of what? The white Jesus. Because we will be serving for 2,000 years, we'll be serving the gods of the other nations and not the God, not our own God. That is what is written. But in verse 5 it says, after this 2,000 years long time have passed, that the people of Israel will come back and look for Yahuwah their God and for David their king, and they will come trembling to Yahuwah and to the, his goodness in the final part of the days. So, yes, in the final part of these two days, the people of Israel will start to awaken and they will start to return to seek Yahuwah their God, the God of Israel. And they will start to seek in their true king, Yahushua. He will rule, who will rule on the throne of David, his father. Okay, they will come trembling, seeking Yahuwah. Just like he, Hosea, he was foretold that when they are in trouble, in distress, then they will seek me, my favor. So we are in the final part of this 2,000 years punishment. And we are now seeking to return. Those of us who have awakened, 
who have been awakened by the Spirit of our God are now seeking our God in order for us to return to Him, in order for us to, to seek to return back to worshiping and calling upon His name alone and leave the gods of the nation alone. So in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 36, it was written, For Yahuwah will judge his people, and he will feel pity for his servants when he sees that their strength has waned, and that only the helpless and weak remain. Yes, it was foretold that God will do what? Judge his people or bring punishment upon his people because of our error. So God has already foretold these things because he is a God that tells the future from the beginning. Before Israel became a nation, God foretold that this will happen, that he will judge his people because he knows the inclination of their heart that he will bring punishment on them. But after he's going to do what? Feel pity for, the, for his servants when he sees that their strength has waned and that only the weak and helpless remain. Yes, today only the weak and the helpless among us is remaining. For we have been devastated as a nation. Some of us don't even know who we are, our origin. We have just become a laughing stock as a people. But God said He will do what? He will feel pity for us, for His servants, those who are seeking Him, who are calling upon Him. Say so He will feel pity for us when He sees that our strengths are gone. Again, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 31, um, it was the Apostle Paul mentioned that too. He said, It is a fearful thing to fall into the judgment of the living God. And he says, he, Paul mentioned it that this judgment will start with the people of God. Yes, God's judgment started with his people, the people, the nation of Israel. And that judgment started when the Messiah was put to death. That calamity came upon the nation of Israel. And they will be in that punishment for almost 2,000 years before God can do what? Show few pity for his people. And that's what has been going on. Israel has been serving 2,000 years among the nations, scattered among the nations, serving as slaves to other nations, bearing the punishment imposed on them. But thank God that that punishment is coming to its end. Yes, that punishment is coming to its end. And after, by the end of the punishment, our God will return back to earth. For he abandoned Israel so that we can bear punishment for our error. After that punishment ends, our God promised that he will return back to rescue his people, the, rem the remaining ones of his people. Notice in the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 1 to 3, <clears throat> there is written, For look, I am sending my, serv my messenger, and he will clear up a way before me. And suddenly the true Lord whom you are seeking will come to his temple and the messenger of the covenant will come in whom you people delight. Look, he will certainly come, says Yahuwah of armies. 
but who will endure the day of his coming and who will be able to stand when he appears for he will be like like the fire of a refiner and like the lie of a laundry man and he will sit as a refiner and cleanser of silver and will cleanse the sons of Levi and he will clarify he will clarify them like he will clarify them like gold and like silver and they will certainly become to Yahuwah a people presenting a gift offering in righteousness. So notice what our God has already foretold what will happen. He said he will send the messenger of the covenant, which is his son, Yahushua, his representative. So he will send him first and he will clear up the way before him. Okay? And then suddenly, after he has come and gone, so he will, the true Lord will return back to earth. That is, Yahuwah our God will return back to earth. He said, he will come to his temple, he and the messenger of the covenant, which is Yahushua, his son. So they will come. He is this messenger we have delighted in, our Messiah. So that he and his father will return back to earth. Okay? So yes, they will suddenly come to so Yahuwah families. But the question is, who will endure the day of his coming? Who will endure the day of his coming? So for he will stand, and who will be able to stand when he appears? Because he's going to like a fire, a fire of refiner, of a refiner and the, the lie of a laundry man. He's going to cleanse the sons of Levi in order to bring God for himself a people produce, presenting what? Gift offering in righteousness. So God said he's going to cleanse the people of Israel. He's going to cleanse the people of Israel. And those that are, the ones that are not, the ones that cannot be cleansed, will be tossed away. The ones that can be cleansed, will be cleansed, so that they can become a people presenting gift offering in righteousness. So our God promised to return, and he will cleanse the people of Israel from all their guilt and error. Yes, remember a laundry man, if you can if it, when a cloth cannot be cleansed or cannot be repaired, is then tossed away to be destroyed. But those that can be cleansed will be refined so that they can become what? Pure. Or live to the standard of spread of that is required for them as people, God's people. And that's what God is said is going to do with his people. He's going to refine us. He's going to as if we, as if you are refining a gold. He's going to refine the people of Israel, especially the Levites, the ones that we chosen as Levites to serve our God. They will be refined, purified, so that there will be a people presenting gift offering to Yahuwah in righteousness. So our God will return after Israel finished bearing the punishment for our error. And he is going to return with his son, the messenger of the covenant. Because he is the messenger of the new covenant that God, we said, is going to do what? Make with his people of Israel. But the question is, who will stand when, he, when they appear, when they return?
So when will our God return back to earth? When will our God return back to earth? Well, in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 29 to 31, there it is written, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, those, the two days of punishment on Israel, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and all the tribes of the earth will be themselves into, into grief, will be themselves in grief, and they will see the Son of Man coming on, on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he will send out his angels with a great trumpet sound, and they will gather his chosen ones together from the four wings, from one extremity of the heavens to the other extremity of the heavens. So it is written, God tells us what he's doing. Immediately after the tribulation or the punishment, two days punishment upon the people of Israel, the 2,000 years punishment, immediately it ends. So the sun and the moon will be darkened. That's it. So they will, give their, no, they will not give their light anymore. And they will fall from the heavens. So you, then you will see the sign of the Son of Man coming. I will appear in the heaven. And all the tribes of the earth will be themselves in grief. For they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the heavens with power and great glory. So immediately this punishment ends for the people of Israel. Our God will return. Yes, our God will return to earth. He and his Son will return to earth. But the Son represents the Father. He will return with the, with the power armies of heaven, the angels. And they will gather back all the chosen ones of our God from one corner of the earth to the other. And they will return them back to where the promised land, the land that he promised to Abraham to give the descendants of Abraham to inherit forever. So our God said he will do this, he will return to earth immediately after the punishment on the people of Israel ends. So this punishment started in AD 33 with the death of the Messiah, Yahushua. The punishment started with the death of the Messiah. If you add 2,000 years punishment to it, that will get you to the year 2033. So immediately this punishment ends. Then a God will return back to earth. And you will see it. Yes, a God will return at the appointed time. Uh, but it's up to you. That is listening to me. Are you prepared for his return to earth? Are you prepared for, he said, who will stand when he returns? Who will stand? So, notice what is written in the book of Joel, chapter 3, verse 9 to 12. It's written, said, prepare. Proclaim this among the nations. Prepare for war. Stay, stay up, mighty men. Let all the soldiers draw near. Let them advance. Say, beat your plowshares into a sword and your pruning shears into a spear. Say, let the weak say, I am powerful. Come and help. 
all you surrounding nations, assemble together to the place, to that place, O Yahuwah, bring down your powerful ones. So let the nations be, arou be roused and come to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there I will sit in order to judge all the surrounding nations. So God said he's returning but the nations, he said they should prepare for war. Because God is going to judge the nations for what they have done to his people. Yes, he said prepare for war. If you don't have a weapon, go buy a weapon. Prepare to fight. If you are not strong, say I'm strong. Get yourself ready because he's coming. Our God is returning back to earth immediately after the punishment on the people of Israel ends. You will see the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the heaven. For he is coming back to gather back his people. And he is coming back with the armies of the heavens. So Jehovah will bring down his what? Powerful ones, his angels. He's going to bring down his angels for fought to war. Just keep in mind, in the book of Isaiah, uh, one angel was sent by Yahuwah, and under 12 hours, he killed 185 Assyrian soldiers, one angel, in 12 hours. Think of what will happen when Yahush when Yahushua returned with maybe a hundred thousand angels. A hundred thousand times two angels. How many a day will put to death? So the nation should prepare for war because our God will soon return. So I hope this message is enlightening to you. Um, and bring hope to you. Uh, if you are an Israelite, it should move you to, to seek to return to calling on your God before it's too late. For all the people that search for their God of the people of Israel, they will be what? Saved. So, again, I thank you for giving attention to this message. I hope it's enlightening to you. Uh, Keep calling on Yahuwah for your salvation. But yes, our God will return. So subscribe to this channel. Like, share what you are hearing with others. Yes, we have been misled for a long time by the nations who are teaching us the scriptures because we are in punishment. But now we are working and we see what is written. Okay? So like, share, and help others to know the truth. Again, thank you.